What's up, Light Bright Nation? What's going on, Light Bright Nation? So welcome back to beautiful Sand Hollow, Utah, which is where we've basically set up our next leg of our journey because we figured this would be a pretty good place to lay low and practice social distancing for the next couple of weeks. Right, this is our favorite place. You guys know that. And the whole area is just open. We can literally head in any direction and there will be nobody. We'll basically spend the next couple weeks, I imagine, wheeling with a few select friends of ours. Again, practicing social distancing wherever possible. But this was kind of our best bet, especially since this is where we would like for our future actual physical home to be. But before we go wheeling, we have a couple things that are kind of a necessity. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if you've been following along, you might have noticed that in our most recent wheeling video, Kevin kind of sort of completely mangled our drive shaft. And I think when JE Reel originally gave us a drive shaft to run, they didn't really realize how bad of a driver Kevin is. And they gave us just their regular drive shaft that most people would run and be totally fine with. But what they really needed to give us was this bad boy. This is actually their Canyon Crawler driveline series for the JL and the JK. And this is what we're gonna be running now because right now we have no rear drive shaft and we kinda need that before we can go off-roading. This bad boy actually has a 45% larger tube than the previous drive shaft that we had because the previous one was made out of 0 .083 wall. This one is 0 .120 DOM. So the tube itself is actually significantly stronger. Now it does weigh a couple extra pounds, so keep that in mind, but it can withstand one hell of a beating, a lot more of a beating than the previous one could. Now, in addition to that, it also has a higher U-joint angle on this end here, and it also has a larger and longer slip joint. So basically what I'm saying is, this is the thing that you can and has been actually used on Ultra 4 cars. And this is exactly what we're putting on the stepchild. Because I suck so bad Because at Kevin is such a terrible driver. <laughs> or we need maybe to you just need to learn how to spot better. <laughs> now, in addition to that, something else that we do need to do before we go off-roading, because we noticed something, we're installing this. Now this is a Rock Shock Anti-Rock, which I'm assuming most of you have probably heard of, but this one is specifically for the rear of RJL because we also found out on our last wheeling trip that our rear sway bar is actually starting to hit the frame because we have so much more up travel and down travel with our new rock crawler suspension. And Kevin can actually show you exactly where it's been hitting. So, well, it's dirty right now. Hold on, let me wipe here, hold this here. So you can see where it's all scraped up on this uh, pinch seam right here, this weld seam, where it's all starting to rust. It's because the sway bar is coming up and hitting the frame, and that's actually limiting my up travel on both sides. It's happening on both sides. So we actually have a little bit more up travel in the suspension, but we can't because the sway bar hits the frame, and then we're that's done. And we were, right, we already have a space around here. So this is spaced. This is down as low as it can go, so when we drop it out, it doesn't flip backwards. So we're pretty much just limited with the rear sway bar. Now, as to why we're switching to the anti-rock here, let's talk about sway bars first. So a sway bar is incredibly stiff, and that's because it was primarily designed to limit your suspension and therefore prevent body roll which is great on-road, except it's completely contrary to what you want off-road, which is performance and traction. Now, then you have your sway bar disconnects, which completely disconnects the sway bar and therefore completely eliminates any sway bar control that you have, which can be great off-road, but it can also cause for extra body roll off-road, which can unbalance your suspension and can actually cause you to lose traction. The anti-rock here is kind of the best of both worlds because it's actually a sway bar that remains connected at all times. Now, for those of you who are saying, but Brittany, our rear sway bar is always connected anyways. This bad boy is still gonna be incredibly helpful because what it's gonna do is free up a ton of our suspension. It's gonna allow greater articulation and flex, and it's gonna be significantly stronger than our factory rear sway bar. Which we've already damaged, because our Which factory rear damaged. sway bar is bent on both ends, and our old end links were actually completely like, like this. Um, that's not going to happen with this guy. That won't happen with this guy, which is why we're installing it today before we go off-roading. Now, with that being said, I'm going to let the boys do their thing, and I'm going to go inside to edit a video that I have to upload later today. Yes, you do. Ah! <laughs> All right, so we're back here at Jake's house. Jake, he's got Coda the Jeep, the yellow one back there. A.K.A. Kelly, because 
aka Kelly, That's because right. I called yeah. him the wrong name on a video a while ago. So he's going to help me install all this stuff today. And first and foremost, we're going to go over a paint marker and some what, blue Loctite? Is That's that right. what we're, we're going to yep. do? All right. Okay, so first and foremost, we're gonna start with this paint marker, and this is just something I like to do, I know others like to do it, is marking your drive shaft. Sometimes they put stickers on them, but how long are stickers gonna really last? What I wanna do is I wanna mark it because if it, for whatever reason, if it ever comes apart, if this slip comes out of the drive shaft, it's balanced together this way. So it needs to go back the same way. So we're gonna paint mark it. And what I'm gonna do is this nipple right here, if you come up and show the, the grease cert, so I'm gonna go off of this guy because this will always stay here even if I hit it on a rock and grind it off, you'll still know it's there. So we're gonna come over and find the mark that it's on. So it's on this guy right here. So we're gonna mark down inside on both sides of this guy. So that's where that goes. And we can literally continue to mark it up along there. So if this ever comes off, I know that it's going on this, on this greaser. So anyway, this is what we're gonna go off of. Super simple, just something to do, just in case this ever comes apart or you have to pull it apart on a trail and one side comes out. It's just something nice to do. The other thing is blue Loctite. We're gonna blue Loctite all the bolts that hold it on both sides, the straps on this side and the four bolts that hold it on the double cardan side. Lastly, this end, if you haven't messed with drive shafts before, this end is taped for a reason. These caps on your U-joints, if this isn't taped, these caps can fall off, all the little bearings fall out, you're gonna have a bad time. Um, you don't want that to happen, so you wanna leave this on. So you actually want to install this end of the drive shaft first, and then carefully remove this tape and install the axle side. This, um, black. So now you want to attach it over here at the transfer case side first, because if you attach it over here to your uh, axle, you won't be able to spin it. So what you do is, I can only get the two bolts right now at the moment. To get to the other two, you need to go inside, pop the transfer case into neutral. That way you can spin it. Once you get it to where you need it, you put it back into two or four high, so that way it's locked into place. But it's all pretty simple, just little hits and tips. So now you're gonna grab your eight millimeter or your five sixteenths, five sixteenths, your two straps, and these four bolts already came with Loctite on them. So that's pretty neat. This side's super simple, but this is the one that you want to make sure to not lose your caps. All right. I got a good view of your butt. <laughs> All right, now we're not filming your butt. Cause nobody wants to see that. Uh, I don't know. Well, okay, so, except for that one guy. Okay, so that's it for the drive shaft. It's actually super simple. Um, what we did was actually left it, left the transfer case in neutral, and then we put a wrench on the bolts, and then he used a crowbar or a pry bar to actually spin the drive shaft to tighten those nuts bolts down. So now we're gonna unload the Jeep, pull it in the driveway, jack it up, get the wheels off, and get to work on this uh, anti-rock sway bar. So first things first to install the anti-rock sway bar is to get the rear in the air, get the tires and wheels off, and get that rear sway bar off of here. Okay, so old sway bar out. New sway bar getting ready to go in. You can see the difference in size, but that's not all that actually separates what these two different sway bars do. I'm actually super excited for this because no more interference. Here you can see how we've been hitting the frame here. That's been hitting on the frame and right here. So again, it's been limiting travel, but this is just gonna be overall beefier and allow more articulation, which is awesome. Okay, so first and foremost, 
those little rubber, uh, actually plastic pieces, insert right here. And this is where your sway bar is gonna go through. It's gonna go through right here. The arms are gonna come back and it's still gonna attach at the same point down here. But this uh, hole in the frame here is kind of chamfered. It's, it's kind of closed up here at the end. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little Dremel and kind of open this baby up. We're gonna open up the outer like quarter of an inch, just kind of go around it and uh, open it up so we can hammer the other piece in. So you can see here we kind of went all the way around and then what we also could do is take that little outer lip and kind of chamfer it, kind of go at an angle so it allows it to slide in a little easier. So we'll, we'll go back around it real quick and just kind of get rid of the sharp lip and kind of, you know, angle it out that way. Okay, so now we want to kind of fit it up there, see if it's gonna want to go in, see how close we are. Give it a little tippy tappy. There it goes. It already go? Yep. That's about it. There you go. Okay. So that's it. We already did the other side. We wanted to make sure we knew what we were doing. <laughs> so you can see we already got the other side ready to go. So we're gonna shove this baby through here and see what happens. Okay, so we just stuck the bar in there and fiddled around with it until it went in the other hole. So first we greased the inside per the instructions, then greased right here and then shoved it in. And it looks like we have about three quarters of an inch sticking out on both sides, but just measure, I just measured to make sure we had the same amount sticking out on both sides, it's greased. Now it looks like we get to put the ends on it. So far this is like, this is like pretty simple. So um, that's kind of nice. So before we put the arms on the uh, rod here, it says that the rule of thumb is that the black anti-rock arms should be level when the axle assembly is in the middle of its travel. So we're gonna use our hydraulic ARB jack here to jack up the body, go to full extension, measure what the shaft length is, which should be, I think, 13 inches, and then cut that in half, which would be, what, six and a half. So we should have six and a half inches there, and that's where the arms should be exactly parallel with everything. And then on top of that, you need to note that the arms, as you see in that photo, the arms must never like be at a straight. When you're fully dropped out, the arms must never be straight to uh, locking out because they can flip and you will damage everything. And of course, that is not covered under any kind of warranty. So we're gonna use the AB hydraulic jack right here, just going into the hitch, lift up the body, take our measurements, and then get back to the halfway mark. So just like with anything, when you have all these different aftermarket modified parts, things have to be modified. <laughs> so our rear towers, that we have um, with our three link and the, the whole rock crawler rear additional tower is not going to allow for this anti-rock sway bar to go here so we're just going to mark and go ahead and cut this baby out we just got to do a little a little trimming and i'll send this over to jeremy at rock crawler so he can maybe make uh, some adjustments to his bracket here um, or if you're doing this on your own you can just cut it and do it on your own So that should, we're gonna clean that up a little bit and we'll put the arm, let's see if we drop the arm back down now. Oh yeah. I think that's just about perfect. Look at that. We'll put the bolt through and, and see. Okay, so we set both of them up perfectly even. I just let it drop right now because the other side's on, but they're both set right here. This is at the ride height that we want. This is gonna be at neutral ride height. That's it, we'll put the bolts in here, lock it down then put the end links on so it's the actual correct length so that it's vertical. So we got both arms on exactly at the same spot. Okay, so we go in ahead and put the bolt through. We put the beauty cap on it. Uh, put a little Loctite on this guy um, and then we put Loctite on these guys. So this one's easier. If you go ahead and put the uh, end link through and tighten this top one down and then you can raise it up and put it where it needs to be down there on the shock mount tower. There we go. So we had to section this guy out a little bit that clears now. You can see that's nice and level. We're right at the middle uh, of the stroke of the shock. That's what she said. 
that's all on so that's it so i'm gonna i'm gonna go to the outside here and if it feels too loose i can also go a little bit further in like that'll stiffen it up just a little bit but i'm really not too worried about it because it's a lot stronger arm and bigger arm so i'm gonna start on the outside and we'll see how she feels Okay, so we ran into a couple small issues as to be expected with everything that's custom on this Jeep, right? right? Yeah. Normally the, the, the rear anti-rock would just bolt on and you'd be good. The biggest problem is, is the outside end of the sway bar end link is hitting the inside of my tire at full stuff. So as the tire comes up and also the front of the tire kicks out as the back of the tire kicks in right at the end link. Now, the reason I'm having the issue is because I have a zero offset wheel, which means it doesn't stick out very far. I did that on purpose because I like the, I don't like the super, super wide. So the, the cure to that is to either run different wheels with a different offset and backspace to set the wheels out and tire, the wheels and tires out further, or something simple like a wheel spacer. So I got on eBay last night, I'm looking at wheel spacers and everything's one to two weeks out where we've got the stuff going on right now with COVID. So anyhow, long story short, I searched by like distance and something came up in St. George. I found the guys on Facebook and Instagram and I was like messaging the heck out of them because today is Sunday, of course nobody's open. And they were nice enough, they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna go wheeling tomorrow, meet me out at the water towers and we'll, we'll bring you guys some, uh, some wheel spacers. So we got some half inch wheel spacers that should fix that all. So luckily these guys were awesome enough and they're local here to St. George. Look at that guy. What's up, Chris? What's going on? <laughs> All right, well, we're not here to wheel, unfortunately, and now I'm kind of mad that the Jeep's not ready, but we're gonna go home and get it ready. This is Julio. So we just met him. We just found him last night on eBay. So, um, you, wheel spacers. Yeah. You guys just have, oh, thanks. Oh, <laughs> real Freaking... sounds like. oh yeah, you, hey, you wanna run them? Yeah, we do it for a lot of domestic vehicles and trucks, you know. Okay, so are you mostly trucks, mostly off-road cars, like what? Yeah, mostly like domestic vehicles and mostly trucks. Like we'll do them for like the new Dodge trucks, you know, the 2020s and that type of thing. I have, thing. A, two, I have a new 2020 Ram. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll do them for the dualies for the single rear wheels and all that stuff. Oh, because we when people them. go to bigger uh, yeah, tires, you have to space the dually and, stuff out. And we make them hub-centric. Oh. So they'll index, you know, on the inside and on the outside. That's very so, important. Yeah. Well, we pro maybe need to get in a wheel spacer sometime. This isn't really the time to really go deep into that, what a hub centric is, what a uh, lug centric is. Um, there's different, there's different wheel spacers for different things. Yeah, absolutely. Different ways. And usually um, if it can be done, we'll, we'll do it. Oh, so you guys, you guys mach machine, you guys do everything. We do a lot of machining. Yeah. That's super awesome. So what's the, what's the website? What's the trailsport4x4.com. So T-R-A-I-L-S-P-O-R-T-4x4.com. All right. Well, there you go. Um, if you need wheel spacers or you have any questions, you could probably ask this guy. He's going to know more about them than I do. But thanks. I appreciate it because we're going to go throw them on the stepchild right now and then maybe meet you guys back out on the trail if yeah, we get no, done definitely. early enough. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, these are our wheel spacers. These are half-inch wheel spacers. Oh, yes, Clorox disinfectant wipes in the Jeep because as we travel... I've got this big thing of Clorox disinfectant wipes where I wipe down all the fuel pumps, I wipe down my hands, I wipe down my clothes. Anything I'm coming into contact with, we are wiping down as we go to gas stations or travel anywhere. Anyway, back to the wheel spacers. So these are nice pieces. These are very, very nice pieces. Um, you can see right here, they have them stamped. So they are eight by 6.5 or eight by 170. They are dual drilled. You can see here that there's one edge that's beveled. So that edge is gonna go to the inside. You want the flat edge on the outside. So the spacer is gonna go on, boop, just like that. Now you do have different kinds of spacers. You have these that are slip on and generally people will only make them to about a half an inch. From there, you need to step up to about an inch and a quarter, which would be bolt on spacers, which would have studs built in that you'd bolt onto them. So anyway, these are made out of 6061 billet aluminum. I'm not worried about these at all having any issues. Now, there are other spacers on the market that are cast aluminum and they are very soft. And what happens is you can put them on, tighten everything down and they kind of smush together, which then means that your lug nut is now loose. And even if you retorque them, they're just not made for the amount of abuse that we're putting this through. And I actually, I wouldn't really trust those really soft, cheap ones. Um, that's why I was really happy we found this guy that actually makes these machines, these in-house out of billet 6061 aluminum. And this is what we're going to throw on and see if this solves our problems. Okay. So here's what we got going on. Pull the wheel off. 
this wheel spacer is going to go, like I said, with that beveled edge in. This is dual drilled, so we'll see if this is the right way. Oh, look at that. I got it the first time. Ugh, kind of hard to push this on with uh, one hand. All right. So here's the issue that we're having. The vehicle has so much flex and I have a zero offset wheel, which means it's sucked in as far as possible. Uh, generally, I like to run about a negative 12 offset. A lot of new uh, wheels run a negative 38. That puts the wheels and tires out way too far. I don't really enjoy that look. But in this situation, what's happening is as the suspension comes up, the whole thing actually pivots this way. So the back comes in, the front goes out, and the tire is actually rubbing the shock a little bit too because it's got so much up travel. And then also with this, everything just kind of moves and this is getting into the tire. Now, luckily this is all rounded and smoothed off, so it's not too, too big of a deal that it's hitting the tire other than you just don't want any interference if you don't have to have it. So I don't want anything hitting. And you can also see it's barely nicking. It's barely, barely, barely touching this inner fender. So we're gonna pull this link off as well, grind down the very edge of the bolt. You can see it's barely sticking out right there. So we're gonna grind that down a little bit. That'll keep that from touching. And uh, we should be good to go. So we're gonna put four wheel spacers on. Well, not right here. We're gonna put one on each corner. <laughs> okay, so we're all done. We have the wheel spacers all on, the, the anti-rock on the back. Um, we've got the new drive shaft on. And after we kind of had to bend, move, cut, trim, do all that kind of stuff, uh, we're done. So it's time to go wheeling, except it's kind of late in the day late now. In the day, but I did promise you guys wheeling on this video, so we are gonna go wheeling right now. Just not really the kind you were expecting. All right, you guys, that's all we actually have for this video. And yeah. there's a very good reason for that, which we're actually gonna go over in the next video. So please stay tuned. But you know that we always love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all your Life Bright Nation merch at lightbrightstudios.com, all of your Life Bright Nation decals at pixeldecals.com. We love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Later, guys. Don't forget about the gladiator giveaway. Don't forget about the gladiator giveaway.